In the beginning, most of us don't have attorneys to help us figure out what evidence we need and how to get it. And unfortunately, the beginning is also when we stand the best chance of getting that evidence, before witnesses go quiet and documents disappear, to quote a NASA official. I got a few free consults from attorneys when I was first starting out. None of them really helped me here, apart from the generic document everything. The attorney I paid $500 to consult with was a little more help. He told me to keep a journal with times, dates, and the names of witnesses. But for the most part, I had to figure out on my own what I needed to prove, the evidence I needed to prove it, and how to get that evidence. Now, if you have an attorney who's helping you figure it out, congratulations, you've got a good one. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing a few videos about different types of evidence and what I learned about them. And here's a short list of a few types. Witness statements, emails, logs, text messages, letters, memos, voicemail messages, personal notes or journals, copies of written policies, performance records, copies of any forms that may be related to your claim, audio or video recordings if they're allowed in your state, and any data that may be related to your claim. Today I want to share my experience with witness statements. Maybe shine a light on some things you can use and help ease some common frustrations that go with trying to get them so you don't have to stress yourself out like I did. Every one of those attorneys that I saw in the beginning told me that without witness statements, I'd lose. Don't even bother fighting, they said. They were partly right. Witness statements are powerful evidence, but they're not the only powerful evidence. Other types of evidence can be just as strong. And that's good, because the first thing I learned about witness statements is how hard they are to get. I was able to get some things from my witnesses, and I learned a lot from what I was able to get. First, the best time to ask for a witness statement is right after whatever discriminatory act they witnessed. The longer we wait to ask, the more time they have to think about it, get cold feet, and clam up. If we want them to speak up, that means we have to avoid scaring them. That means avoiding legal jargon and not flooding them with our intense emotions. And of course, even if they do give you a statement, they may not say everything you need them to, or anything you need them to. The little bit I got from my witnesses in the beginning definitely would not have been enough to win my case. Another thing about witness statements is that getting them can be an emotional process, and I really wasn't prepared for that. For instance, the two best statements I got were from two low-wage contractor workers who would have been defenseless if my boss had turned her retaliation on them. So even though every lawyer I talked to told me how much I needed those statements, I just couldn't bring myself to use them. Luckily, there were a half dozen other people who saw what my boss did, and most of those people were my peers who were relatively protected. Luckily, what I lacked in witness statements, I made up for with documentation, and we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. If we're going to use witness statements, it makes sense to protect our witnesses as much as we can. We can count on our employer to pressure our witnesses into saying what they need them to say. I know that sounds paranoid, but I promise you it's not. I recommend saving the names of as many witnesses as possible until the EEOC investigation. If your employer doesn't have the names, they won't know who to pressure. So there is a greater likelihood that your witnesses will tell the real story. And your investigator will document that story under penalty of perjury. So it'll be a lot harder for them to change their story later. And of course, since your investigator is a neutral third party, there's a better chance that they're going to be willing to open up. I know my investigator was able to get a lot more out of the witnesses than I was able to get on my own. Which brings me to the next thing about witness statements. Even if you aren't able to get any in the beginning, by your hearing, you may have some. Even if that testimony comes from their witnesses. <laughs> An employer can be brilliant at their mission, like NASA was. That doesn't mean their witnesses can't say something that's incredibly stupid that's going to help you. Most witnesses in these types of cases don't really know anything about policy or the law around discrimination, and that makes them terrible liars. I can't tell you how often I've heard the very same thing from other employees who have won their cases. It's true that witness statements can be very powerful evidence, so I encourage you to try to get yours right away, right after the discrimination happens. And if you can get them, great. Protect your witnesses and carry on. But if you can't get statements, don't stress. In the meantime, try to focus on documenting everything you possibly can. Eventually, there will be an investigation and all those witnesses are going to have to speak on the record. Sometimes we can trust the process. That's it for today, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care and hang in. Bye, smart. Hey.
again.